What's good, everyone? A few months ago, I gave you my thoughts about ES Presence and whether or not it was worth it. And though it does have some flaws, on the whole, I actually really liked it. You can check out the link in the description or the card here to check out that video. Now that I've used it for several months, I realized that it has become a core component in my automation arsenals. And when Akara and some noteworthy YouTubers released their own millimeter wave sensors, I started to wonder what advantages and disadvantages ES Presence had over a millimeter wave. So let's put them together in a head-to-head -head battle to see which will be victorious is what I would say if I had a millimeter wave product. Why won't they let me be great? Since I can't really do a head-to-head -head battle, um, I'll just talk about ES Presence and how it shines brightest over millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is excellent at detecting presence in an area. It's so sensitive that it can even detect breathing. I think that's rather impressive, to be honest. On the other hand, ES Presence is not that sensitive. It is more like a bludgeoning instrument. It just tells you who's in a room. That, that's all it does. And it does this by tracking Bluetooth-enabled devices, which can be tied to a person. As benign as that ability may be, that one feature basically allowed me to create about five automations that I'm gonna show you here. This subflow was designed to send notifications to specific users using ES Presence. And the way this works is that it basically finds the Google speaker in the room where the user is located. By doing this, I'm actually able to choose whether or not a specific person should get a message, or if it should be relayed through to the entire house. And if Home Assistant can't find that given user, then by default, the message will just play throughout the entire house. Now, this is extremely useful because when automations need to alert me of their progress or simply need to update me about information that I'm looking for, it always plays specifically where I am. This means I never have to create automations with a bunch of conditions to play in different places. Even more convenient is that automations are tailor-made for the individual. It's almost like having a butler that follows you around. If I need to hear calendar updates, it's not gonna play everywhere. It can just know that, hey, this person is in that spot. Let me deal with them. Now, as accurate as millimeter wave can be, it won't be able to provide that kind of experience. I mean, like, you, you kinda can, depending on your situation and the context, but it won't be easy. I think Reed kind of put it best. Remember that millimeter wave sensor I told you about? Well, if it detects someone and there's no Bluetooth phone or watch in this room, then by deductive reasoning, I can probably guess it's my kids. So you could use millimeter wave with complex logic and kind of do a process of elimination to determine where a message should be sent. For example, if it's past 10 p.m., millimeter wave can ignore the presence detection in, let's say, my kid's room, where it's unlikely I'll be there at that time. So again, this experience is just not the same, but you could do it with millimeter wave. Now, if your smart home knows specifically who's in a room, then theoretically, you can program preferences for automations. Lights can be set to a specific colors, based off of, based off of the occupants thermostats can change based off of who is in the room your whole automation setup and experience can basically be dynamically changed and, and altered based off of 
who is in the room or the combination of people that's in the room. I think that's pretty dope. Now, there's no workaround for this experience using millimeter wave. The closest equivalent would be to create a preference-based uh, system that is based off of the number of people it detects in a room. But this may work in some cases, but really it's just not the same. It's not the same. With the previous two automations, you can create millimeter wave alternatives Kinda. However, this is an ES Presence exclusive. Since ES Presence track devices via Bluetooth, it means that Home Assistant can tell you which room your device is in. I created a switch helper and created a simple automation that would blast all of the Google Home speakers with the location of the device whenever the switch is turned on. Turn on Find Michael's phone. Sure. Turning on the Find Michael phone. You're currently in the office. Nice. I think I've only used it once ever, but, you know, at least it's there. That's something that it can do that millimeter wave can't. Oh, wait. Um, I should probably mention that in the description, there's a link to a GitHub page called Chaperone that have copies of some of the automations I talked about here. But just as a word of caution, you will have to update them to fit your needs and your system specifically. Like for instance, I have ES presence, you may not. You may have ES presence, but your rooms may be different. Update it accordingly. This last advantage takes users' preferences and dials it all the way up. And it's best achieved if you know who is in a particular location. By incorporating GPT, you can have your responses be personalized to you. So. If you've been following Home Assistant's like Year of the Voice and all of the stuff that they've been coming out with, you've probably seen the demo where they have their Home Assistant uh, assist, basically mimicking the mannerisms of Super Mario. Hi, what is your name? It's Amy, Mario. Similarly, you can give your automations a bit of personality, the same way that Tony Stark's AI Friday or Jarvis had two different mannerisms. Now, this is not something I'm personally interested in at the moment, though I feel, you know, once this becomes more, like like GPT and AI becomes a little bit more mainstream and it kind of finds a very comfortable place within smart home technology, then yeah, as a first world problem, I may head down this route. But technically you can do it now, you, you can try now, and that's made possible using ES Presence. Now, though it would be a little bit more interesting if you could dynamically change the voice to go along with that personality but again beggars can't be choosers at least we have this now as dope as all of these automations are there are some obvious and not so obvious caveats starting with the obvious caveats uh, you need to have a tracked device like all the time now for some this is not a big deal and for others this can be very annoying I think Reed came up with a really dope solution what's really cool is if I put my phone on the charger my smart home automatically switches over and starts tracking my Apple Watch and what room it's in instead of my phone, so I don't have to always carry my phone with me. It's pretty sweet. I thought that was pretty clever. I'm gonna steal that from you, Reed. Thanks. Essentially, you can do stuff like that where it may be less of a burden, but bottom line is that it's not tracking you biologically, it's tracking like devices, so you need to be tethered to something. And you may not want that and that's okay. So whether it's a phone or a watch, ES Presence need Bluetooth enabled devices to track, and it doesn't know technically if that person holding the device is actually the intended user. So that's another thing to kind of watch out for. So this means that you could have scenarios where a spouse may get an experience that's intended for you, but you left your phone or your watch behind. This kind of leads to the other obvious flaw. If you do have something that is sensitive, then, you know, someone can just take your stuff and then now they have access to that. So don't do anything sensitive with ES Presence. Just leave it for more general stuff. Now, one not so obvious downside is that it isn't fast or reliable as millimeter wave. I mean, like technically that is obvious after you have it, but in practice, really, it's not obvious going into it. So Millimeter Wave knows for certain that there are people in a room and it does this 
pretty much instantly. However, ES Presence, on the other hand, can take several seconds to register that you're in a new area. And depending on the layout of your house, it may actually think that you're in a different room if the different, you know, radar signals overlap. Again, Reed did a lot of experimenting with this and he found a way to kind of hone this down and make it more reliable. I haven't tried it out yet, but I would say I'm going to leave a link to Reed's video. So, but despite all of these shortcomings, I still think ES Presence is worth it and has great advantages that can't really be achieved with millimeter wave. Now, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you guys could subscribe and or like or both. Let me know in the comments what automations you would create with ES Presence. Okay, bye.